factor analysis is a very useful tool for validating measurement. The idea of factor analysis is that it takes in multiple indicators and then it answers the question what do these indicators have in common. So uh, it tries to extract or identify underlying dimensions from your data. The reason why we use factor analysis for measurement is that before we apply any reliability statistics we have to study if the indicators are unidimensional. If so, then we use a unidimensional reliability index. If not, then we calculate the reliability statistic based on the factor analysis. Factor analysis also can be used to assess the hypothesis that the indicators are consequences of a common cause and in that way we can justify, try to use factor analysis to justify causal claims where we say that the construct causes multiple items. The factor analysis uh, techniques are, there are two main variants, exploratory factor analysis and confirmatory factor analysis. In exploratory factor analysis, uh, the co it's uh, an exploratory process where you get, give the computer your data set and then you ask the computer to uh, give you three factors, two factors or how many factors you can uh, you want to have from the data and then the computer will identify the factors. In confirmatory factor analysis you specify the factor structure yourself. So you say that first three indicators for example uh, measure one thing that is one factor then the second three measure another thing that's a factor and then the remaining four indicators measure a thir third thing and that's uh, the third factor and then the computer will uh, estimate the model for you and tell if that model is plausible for the data. Exploratory factor analysis is easier to apply because you don't have to specify the structure yourself, you just specify the number of indicators and which variables you use and for that reason uh, many people get started with the exploratory factor analysis instead and if you do data exploration or some initial analysis then exploratory factor analysis is quicker to, to do for your data. Then uh, so exploratory analysis is the one that is typically covered first followed by confirmatory factor analysis. I will now demonstrate factor analysis using the exploratory approach and to do that we need some, some data. And our data are uh, from Olympic decathlon so we have the 10 sports that the athletes do that are uh, 100 meters run, long jump, short put, high jump, 400 meters run, 110 meter hurdles, uh, discus throw, pole vault, javelin throw and 1500 meters run. So there are 10 different uh, sports that you do in this competition and then uh, you are rated based on, on your performance on all and, and the, the overall ranking is determined by the scores. So you have to be a very good overall athlete to be able to do decathlon. So uh, the data looks like, like this. So that's uh, the first 15 observations. Um, there are 100 meters is seconds, long jump how many meters, short put how many uh, meters, uh, high jump how many meters, 400 meters run how many seconds, 110 meter hurdle how many seconds, discus throw how far in meters you threw it, uh, pole jump how high, how many meters, javelin, how many meters you threw the javelin and then uh, how many seconds uh, was the one, one and a half kilometer run. So uh, what kind of dimensions does this data have? That's what factor analysis will tell us and we'll first do uh, a factor analysis and we'll request two factors just to get started with something. So that's the two-factor solution and uh, before I explain the factors it's important to understand what do these numbers tell us. And uh, let's start with uh, uniqueness and communality. So uniqueness and communality are sum to 100 or 1. And uh, uniqueness or communality first tells how much of the variation of this particular indicator the two factors explain. So for example, uh, short put, the uh, factors explain 94 and a half percent of the variation and only 0.5 percent remains unexplained. So the uh, uniqueness is how much of the indicator remains unexplained by the factors. Ideally, uh, if the factor model is correctly specified so that the factors perfectly match your theoretical constructs 
and uh, the indicator, there are no systematic measurement errors, then uh, this uniqueness here quantifies the amount of, of random noise in the indicators. That's an ideal case, whether that applies uh, in, in any real case, that's uh, another question. But that's the ideal case. So this is uh, the, the communality is kind of a measurement of reliability and this is uh, an estimate of uh, unreliability. So that's one way. Then we have two factors. We have uh, MR1 and MR2. The, uh, the MR simply comes from the fact that we estimated min res technique. You don't have to care about what that means. So we have a first factor and second factor. And uh, these are called factor loadings and uh, they are in correlation metric here. So the idea here is that uh, the first indicator correlates at minus 71 with the first factor and minus 0.22 with the second factor. So the first indicator, first variable is very strongly associated with the first factor and then uh, a bit more weakly associated with the second factor. So let's just take a look at the first factor now. And uh, the first factor here we first, uh, we identify that some of the indicators have negative factor loadings. We have to understand why that is the case. If we start to look at what are those items that have negative loadings, we have uh, the 100 meter run, we have the 400 meter run, we have the 110 meter hurdles, and then we have uh, the 1500 meter run. So all these are running sports and uh, what they have in common is that more time means that you're worse. The less time means you're better. With all these others, you are throwing something or you're you're jumping and there more is better. So in, in these running sports, less time is better. In these others, more distance, more height is better. To make the results uh, a bit more understandable, I will therefore now reverse score the times so that all variables indicate, uh, more of a variable indicates that the person, uh, the athlete performs better. So I will uh, reverse the signs of, of these all running sports and then we have this kind of factor analysis result. We can see that every factor, every indicator here loads positively on the first factor and the magnitude of the factor loadings differ. So how would we uh, interpret the first factor? All indicators are positively associated with something. What's the thing we have to interpret? What is the underlying underlying dimension that these are, that influences these dimensions, these indicators, variables according to uh, these results. This first factor, if everything correlates positively to the first factor, with first factor, then the first factor basically is how good the guy is. So uh, how good of an athlete the person is. If you are a good athlete, then you perform better in all of these, these uh, sports. So good athletes are expected to perform better than bad athletes. Therefore, all the items are positively correlated. The, the second attribute, uh, second factor here, we can see that uh, there are shot put and uh, javelin and discus are positively associated. 1500 meter is negatively associated as is all the other running sports. So uh, the second factor uh, quantifies whether the person is better at sports that require strength versus the uh, sports that require running speed. So there is a trade-off if you are very uh, bulky guy, you're good in uh, these strength sports but you have more mass, therefore you're not that great in the running sports. So there's a trade-off and this second factor quantifies that trade-off. So that we have a factor how good the guy is and we have a factor of whether the guy is better at running or strength sports. That's not, um, we would ideally like to uh, think that there are two dimensions to this data. How good the guy is in, in running and how good the guy is in th these sports that require strength. But this factor analysis solution doesn't answer that question. To answer that question we do something called factor rotation. So the factor rotation uh, is a technique that reorients the factor solution so that it's simpler to interpret. Typically when you apply a factor analysis and you have two correlated dimensions, 
then uh, the first factor will capture a little bit of both dimensions like we uh, have uh, running speed and, uh, and strength captured by the factor how good the guy is and the second factor will capture then uh, whether the guy is better at running or whether better at sports. When we reorient the factor analysis using factor rotation then uh, the factors will more will typically uh, correspond better to, to actual dimensions in the data. So here after rotation we have the first factor strongly associated with all the running sports. So we have uh, 0 0.84 here, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 and so on. And then the second factor is strongly associated with sports that require strength like the discus and uh, the shot put. We can uh, see that even a bit better by uh, reordering these indicators. So we reorder based on the first factor and uh, we can see that uh, the running sports are all the five largest loadings. Then we have uh, the, uh, the pole jump and then we have the strength sports here, the shot put, javelin and discus throw. The first factor now clearly has an interpretation. It, it is related to running. So that's the running skills or how good a runner you are. And the second factor has a clear interpretation. It's related to these uh, strength sports and it's uh, upper body strength. The pole vault requires both. So it's loading both. This is called a cross loading because it uh, loads on two factors. And uh, first you have to run and then you put the pole into the hole and then you have to uh, use the upper body to uh, use the pole and get as high as possible. So pole vault requires both skills. We can see here that also that high jump has a high uniqueness. So it's not really related to upper body strength at all. And it's not really related to running speed because uh, you don't have to uh, run fast. You just run to pace yourself and then you jump up. So jumping up is different from running fast. In long jump, you have to, uh, the, the better you're running, the, the faster you can get yourself going and the faster will, uh, the, the further you will jump, uh, fly when you jump. So that requires running. And this way we can interpret uh, the meaning, give meaning to these factors. So that was a, a two-factor solution. We can of course get more than two factors. So there's uh, quite a lot of uh, unexplained variation here. So a uh, high jump, 90% variation is unexplained by these two factors. So we can try extracting more factors. And uh, whether it makes sense to do so is uh, related to more uh, what's your theoretical expectation and uh, can you actually interpret the factors instead of a, a statistical question of whether we can explain more variance between the indicators. There are statistical techniques to uh, decide the number of factors but it is uh, a theoretical concern and it's about whether you can interpret the result anymore. Let's try three factors and see what happens. So that's the rotated solution and uh, I have ordered the uh, variables again according to the first factor loading and then the second factor loading. So we have three factors now. The first factor is the same running speed. Then the second factor is the same uh, upper body strength. So we have the, the uh, strength sports here. And then we have um, a third factor uh, that has the 100, 500 meter run and the 400 meter run and the long jump and not much else. So. Uh, it's not about running speed as much as it's, it's about uh, running stamina. So uh, it's slightly different. So this is uh, whether you're good at running short distances, that's explosive running speed and how fast you accelerate, things like that. And this is whether you can keep up the running. Uh, and the upper body strength is the same. So we can uh, divide running further into two subdimensions. Whether it makes sense to do so is another question. In this case, uh, Probably not. Probably it's better to just say that uh, some people are better at strength sports and some people are better at running sports. We can also get four factors and uh, we get the same factors, running speed, upper body strength, running stamina. And then uh, the final factor is simply uh, high jump. So uh, that receives its own factor and nothing else loads on the high jump factor. So when we start extracting factors, typically we can go uh, go and get as many factors as we have indicators and eventually uh, we will get these factors that just explain a single indicator and nothing more. So the idea of a factor is to try to find an underlying dimensions from the data 
And once we start to get these uh, factors that just tell that, well, then, then there's the how good the guy is in high jump, then uh, it's not really a factor anymore in the sense that it's an underlying dimension. So probably uh, with this data, uh, three factors, if we're really interested with running stamina and running speed difference, could be a good solution or we could just take the two-factor solution which measures uh, the running skills and the strength of the athlete. So it's, it's an argument, uh, the choice of factors depends on what's your research question and what kind of abstraction do you want to have for your data. In practice when we apply factor analysis to measurement scales, for example surveys, then and we want to measure five different things with the survey, then we set the number of, of factors to five because we want to get five things from the data and ideally uh, the factor analysis demonstrates that the indicators correspond to the uh, theoretical constructs that they're supposed to measure. Factor analysis is based on the correlation so it is important to, uh, it's useful to understand uh, the relation between correlation matrix and uh, factor analysis. The, the model implied correlations match they are the same principle applies here as in regression model and I'll cover that uh, a bit later. But here we can see that factor analysis uh, groups the indicators based on the correlations. So we have here first the running speed factor. So all the running sports are highly correlated. So they are, they are uh, reflections of one underlying running speed factor. Then we have these uh, others. Uh, we have the upper body strength. So those are, those are sports that require upper body strength are highly correlated. Then we have the running stamina factor. So uh, some of the running sports require both endurance and uh, speed. And then uh, 1,500 meter run requires uh, endurance more than speed. And then we have high jump, which is not loading on any factors because it is very uh, really uncorrelated with any other sport. So high, high jump is a unique sport in that it doesn't really uh, require strength and it doesn't require speed, it requires the capability to just jump very high. 